Hey, a pleasant good day everyone. This is Sports for Night News. I'm Joe Bork, aka Projo, and this is going to be a quick reaction to David Savard being traded from actually Columbus to Detroit and then subsequently to Tampa to work out the money problems um, in this trade to get it done. So, um, Frank Cervalli said Tampa Bay Lightning are, of course, getting David Savard. Again, they gave up a first round pick to help them win the cup last year to get Barkley Goodrow, who's a tough. Um, nut to crack, and a very good, annoying player like Scott Hartnell says is always a compliment on the ice to really get into the heads of the other team. Well, David Savard's a very good defensive defenseman from the right side, something they were really striving to get in his career. He's a plus 20, 24 um, with a Corsi 4 as a defensive defenseman, not really a puck possessor of 48, so that's still pretty darn good. This year, his numbers are down big time, but Columbus, if you look at a lot of their roster as a whole, other than Russ Slovich, who's come in and done great since coming in, a lot of their numbers are down as a whole. Their team's been disappointing this year. So him coming into a change of scenery, that seems really good for David Savard. But 2CBJ was the 2021st first-round pick. Brian Lashoff, who's just a 30-year-old AHL swingman defenseman that can play some NHL games. Tampa Bay's third-round pick. So they got a first and a third for David Savard, as well as a uh, good AHL defenseman that'll help your AHL team. And then if you need him to play a couple NHL games in Lashoff, Ken for you. And then the Red Wings, for helping out with the money woes of this trade, got a fourth-round pick, which is not a free fourth-round pick. Because as Frank Cervalli says, CBJ first retained 50% on Savard, then traded him to Detroit, who retained another 50% of Savard's deal before sending him to Tampa. So Tampa is giving up on the surface again in back-to-back -back years, a first-round pick for a guy that on the surface doesn't look like he's worth a first. But the bigger picture is they're doing this because of the retained money. They're giving a first to CBJ and a third and Lashoff, who's again an AHL defenseman. But they're doing that so they eat 50%, and then all they gave to Detroit to subsequently trade him um, to Tampa is to, to them. All they gave to Detroit to subsequently trade him to them for Tampa Bay right after Detroit acquired him was a fourth-round pick, and they ate the other 50%. So Tampa's really giving up a first, a third, lash-off, and a fourth for Savard, who they're not even paying since both... CBJ, according to Frank Cervalli, retained 50% first, and then traded him to Detroit, who retained the other 50% before sending him to Tampa. So this was actually a very geniusly um, thought-out trade by Tampa Bay, and actually a very smart trade. Maybe, yes, they gave up the assets a little bit more than some of their fans would like, giving up another first for a guy that on the bare-bone surface might not be worth the first-round pick. But getting that money and not having to pay anything for him when you have him on a team, that definitely uh, can be worth uh, giving up that first, that third, and also the fourth to Detroit because Tampa's trying to make a run at the Cup again. They also probably are going to have Kucherov come back potentially for the playoffs, so they couldn't bring in all of Savard's even with their current LTIR contract, so they had to figure out something here. And they just got very savvy. Uh, Julian Brazebos just got very savvy and was able to figure it out uh, going through Detroit and Columbus. So they ate 50%, giving him again, giving Columbus their 2021 first round pick, which is going to be towards the bottom of the first round, anywho. So it's going to be more of a late first, which is more of a a good second, like beginning second round pick. You have to scout really well as Columbus can. So giving them that cocka line and he's found guys there, that's a good bonus pick for Columbus um, with the way they draft with cocka line and a third round pick in 2022. And then Lashoff's just a journeyman defenseman. So <clears throat> I think giving up all that plus the fourth to Detroit was worth it because Tampa's going to have Kucherov potentially come back in the playoffs and now have a good defensive defenseman that for his career has very good numbers. He's just struggling in a very down year for Columbus. I think the change of scenery is going to do him wonders, just like it did for Goodrow. As soon as he came in, you saw the spark plug he supplied uh, coming from San Jose, which was downtrodden to Tampa, which just sparks you right away. I think that same thing's going to happen for David Savard. I think this was a very smart trade and a very well exquisitely thought out trade by Julian Breezeboss, who went all scholar on everybody and just figured out a way to save the most money for his team. 
bring in a guy like David Savard, who's a very good defensive defenseman, which is all Tampa needed. They have enough guys that can puck move, move the puck, and push the play. They don't need another guy. that They just need a guy that could help stay home, be a veteran that they could bring into the room, be a good guy, a good vo- another voice in the locker room, and that is exactly who they got in David Savard. Columbus got very good assets in a late-round, first-round pick, a third-round pick in the next year's draft. So I think that's very good for Columbus to be able to have that, especially with their draft history. And then the Red Wings have Stevie Y down there, who has a pretty decent draft history over his career. If he can grab somebody with the fourth or use that fourth, combined with some of the picks he's accumulated to trade for people, uh, they got a fourth out of it just for helping out in a trade. So this trade really obviously works out mainly for the Columbus Blue Jackets bringing in the first round pick and the third round pick, and for Tampa Bay being able to get their man that they need on defense. But it's also just nice for Detroit just for helping out eating half of a thing when they have loads on loads of dollars being a rebuilding team, eating half of a contract just for the rest of this year. They got a fourth round pick thrown in. So good for them as well and good for Stevie Y to be able to do that. But Breeze Box really went full scholar on this, really figured this one out. Good on him to get David Savard. It's going to be fun to watch him down in Tampa. They definitely seem like a pivotal cup contender to be able to go back to back, be the first team since Pittsburgh did it in 16 and then 17, if I remember correctly on those years of going back to back. So Tampa could be that. They're going for it. They're giving up their first and third for next year. The first for this year and the third for next year to Columbus for it, as well as a fourth to the Detroit Red Wings to go for it. And bringing Davis of Art as well as Brian Lashaw for journeyman defenseman who also went to Columbus. I hope you all enjoyed this reaction to the Davis of Art trade to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Well, really to the Detroit Red Wings and then subsequently to the Tampa Bay Lightning. This has been Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. Pro Joe. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Enjoy all the great hockey action and enjoy all the great big trades coming up potentially too and all the great deadline coverage coming up so have a great safe and pleasant day again everybody peace out and have a great week and please subscribe trying to hit 130 as soon as possible at 127 right now really appreciate the support peace out everyone